Welcome everyone back to the channel. In this video I'm going to bring you a long term review of the Nikon Z6. Uh, previously I did a uh, kind of a one month first impression of it, uh, but this time I've had it for a couple months now and I've been able to use it mostly daily for both photo and video work, so I thought now would be a good time to kind of get a review out. Um, now is a good time to be buying a camera, especially if you're wanting to do it for video because everyone's doing stuff from home. Uh, so I'll kind of go through my buying process, why I chose this camera, and who it may actually be for, what I like, don't like, and go from there. Uh, this video is going to be shot on the Nikon Z6. I will get you some footage as the review goes along. Uh, it'll be on my iPhone, but that's the only way I can get a uh, video of it. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it from editing this video, so you'll get kind of an idea of what the uh, video looks like out of the camera. I'm also going to use the internal microphone, so you get an idea of how that uh, will work maybe if you don't want to buy a microphone right off and you just want to use the camera straight out. Um, so I originally uh, started using cameras. I was using regular DSLRs. I had a Canon 5D Mark III. I've had an Nikon D800. I'm not brand loyal to any of them, uh, but I wanted something a little smaller, a little compact. So I started shopping around and there was basically three options. Uh, Canon USR or the RP. Uh, Sony a7 III and then the Nikon Z6. Uh, I rented the Sony a7 III for a week and while I think it's overall a better camera than maybe the Nikon Z6 is, it just didn't fit my style. It was too small, uh, my hands aren't massive, but it just didn't fit well in my hand and it was kind of a pain to carry around just because of how awkward it was to use. Um, so that ruled that out because I honestly probably would have went that route because there's a little bit more lens options because that system's been around for longer. Um, so between the Nikon Z6 and the Canon EOS R, and I, I liked both of the cameras. The Nikon Z6, I feel like it ergonomically is much better than the EOS R is. Um, it just fits better in my hand. All the buttons are in the right spot. It's very similar to the D800, D810, D850. Uh, if you've had a Nikon camera in the past, you're going to easily be able to fall into to this without much learning curve. Uh, the menu setup's about the same. Uh, it's a little more advanced vi video wise, but the menu's about the same as what it used to be. Uh, so I, I uh, started shopping around trying to find used ones. I actually did buy this used and I paid around $1,200 for it. I bought it from Lens Authority, uh, which is a uh, lens rentals where they basically just sell their used gear off of. Uh, had about 10,000 uh, actuations on the shutter, so I got a pretty good deal on it as I was not looking to buy new because I wanted to save a little bit of money. So the reason why I didn't go with the Canon USR was mainly because I can't afford the lenses. Uh, they make excellent lenses for that, for that camera, but all of them, besides a few, cost $2,000, $2,500. So that's why I went with the Nikon Z6. Uh, so my first overall using it, uh, some things I like, don't like. Um, the ergonomics is, is number one for me. Uh, it just fits well in my hand, it's easy to use. The menus are laid out logically, I believe. Uh, it's real easy to go from photo to video and not have any issues there. Uh, I do like that it has the EVF, the electronic viewfinder, and it also has a touch rear LCD screen, which is miles above what my uh, Nikon D800 was in the past. So if you're wanting to be able to use both, I think it's a better option, especially if you're doing any type of handheld stuff and you don't want to use the EVF, you have the back screen to use, which is uh, much better than what it, they were in the past. Uh, so I do this use this for hybrid stuff. I do uh, half photo, half video. I'm mainly a hobbyist, so I'm not gonna go through the whole specs of the system. 24 megapixel sensor, it produces excellent images. Uh, same as the Sony a7 III or the Canon EOS R, they're going to produce very similar images. Uh, so if you're just looking for a full frame mirrorless camera, I think this is the one to go with if you're wanting to spend a little less money down the line, and I will talk about that as we go. Um, but build quality is great. Uh, I've used it outside. I generally try to take care of my stuff, but I don't baby it. Uh, it seems like, again, I bought it used, it seems like something that's gonna last forever. There is a little bit of the rubber uh, that I'll try to get you some video of, uh, but it has kind of started wearing off a little bit, which is a Nikon thing. They're pretty known for that, uh, the rubber having issues coming off. I mean, the D800 had a big issue where the whole entire thing would come off. This is just a little where kind of your fairy nail got nicked on it, so that's something 
keep in mind, but the whole system, I have no doubt that this will withstand a little bit of rain, dust, cold, warm weather. I wouldn't have any issues there. Um, so another, another thing that I like about it is that the lenses are affordable while they're not necessarily high-end pro-grade f1.2 lenses. Uh, they're 24, 35, 50, and 85 millimeter. 1.8 S lenses are all $1,000 or less, so it's an easier system to get into, especially if you want to purchase a couple lenses without breaking the bank. So I have the 35 millimeter 1.8 on here. Uh, I prefer to have the 24, but I got a good deal on this, so that's, that's what I have. Uh, but I think the lenses, they will grow. You'll be able to get more pro-grade lenses. Uh, there's rumors that a 50 millimeter 1.2 is supposed to come out sometime. It'll probably cost a fortune, but if you're wanting to get into a system a little cheaper, I think the Nikon Z6 is the way to go. Mainly because you can get them really inexpensive used. Uh, just make sure it's a USA model. That way you can you do any warranty work down the road or any type of repairs if, if that needs to be done. Uh, just because our lenses are so much cheaper. Uh, so, for video photo, I think it does an excellent job. Again, it's a mirrorless full frame camera. It's going to produce excellent images. Uh, the video took me a little while to get the color right on it, but that's just because I'm not a pro at this. I'm a hobbyist, so it took me a little bit, but uh, you can play around with it and it, it doesn't have any problems. Uh, I shoot all my video on 1080p. I don't do 4K, but the camera doesn't get hot, doesn't get warm. Uh, I haven't had any issues even using it outside. 4K, I did a little trial footage on that just to test it out, and the camera did get a little warm, uh, but I did not have any issues. Uh, so that's those are some of the big positives. If you're familiar with the Nikon ecosystem, I would highly recommend going that route. Uh, I haven't tried the adapter or anything. I usually just use the native lenses that are made for it. I'm not really interested in making the system any bulkier. Uh, because that was one of the reasons why I really liked it is that it was just so much smaller and the lenses aren't massive, giant, they're not real heavy. Uh, they're all weather sealed, the 1.8s uh, are, so you're going to get some weather sealing on there. So uh, I, I just think it's an excellent all-around system. If you're a hobbyist, even if you're maybe just starting to get into some professional work, uh, mainly because the 1.8 lenses, that, those are really good enough, I believe. I don't think you need 1.2 for everything. Uh, so that's, that's, that's again, the positives. Some of the negatives, uh, it does require an XQD card, which while is a little bit more uh, reliable, supposedly, uh, you're going to pay more for them. I believe I paid $90 for mine, and I think it's 64 gigabyte, maybe 32, but they're really, really expensive, and it only has one card slot. So if you're doing any type of pro work, like a wedding photographer or anything that requires that uh, and you're worried about the card that's something to keep in mind uh, but that's one thing that I really didn't didn't care for was that XQD card because again then it's hard to get them off on your computer my laptop has an SD card slot so it would have been easier just to go and do that uh, another negative would be again the lens selection if you're looking for pro grade lenses I don't think this is uh, possibly the camera for you if you're looking for those 1.2 uh, like the Canon uh, lenses that they have for their system. Uh, this probably isn't the line. It doesn't have a lot of lenses out yet. There's no 135, uh, which I would really like. Uh, 135, there's no I'd like a 51.2. I probably couldn't afford it, but uh, it'd be nice to have that option if I wanted to go down the line. The menu system can be a little complicated if you are new to cameras. So if you're just looking to get into doing photography or doing any type of photo work, this may not be the system for you because it is a little more complicated than saying getting a Nikon D750, which is a pretty advanced system, but uh, there's just way more options in here. Um, when it comes to the autofocus, I've had really good luck. It's on the most current firmware. Again, I had a D850 or D800 before this, and uh, the autofocus walk, walk great. Um, the eye and face autofocus, I think, is excellent on this. Probably not online with this with the Sony A7 III, uh, but it does good enough for me. Uh, we have a newborn, does great taking photos of him, does good with the cat, does good taking photos of my wife, and just generally out when we're traveling. I've had any focus issues. Sometimes it will back focus and not focus on the face, but that's usually fixed with just focusing on something else and then shooting back. Uh, but that's been here or there, not, not too often. So I've had excellent, I think the autofocus is 
one of the best cameras I've ever had. Um, it, you can use the old batteries with it, that's also another plus. I don't have any old Nikon batteries, but if you had some old, I forget what the, the model number is, but basically for the 750, 800, 810, and 850, if you have old batteries, it will work in there. You cannot charge with the old batteries through USB-C, so you can charge, uh, if you have the newer Nikon uh, Z system batteries, you can't charge over USB-C, which is nice if you have a pinch in your you know, you're, you're out and about, you don't have the charger, but you have a USB-C brick, you could do a little bit of charging there. Um, so that's really it. Again, the EVF is another big selling point. It's, a, I think it's a little bit better than the Canon EOS R. It's a lot brighter. Uh, it doesn't have as many focus points, I believe, but honestly, that doesn't matter. I don't think, I think they all have great focus systems. Yes, one may be a millisecond faster than the other one, but if you're not doing pro work or you know real pro grade work, which you can do with this, I don't think you're gonna notice much of a difference. Um, so that's it guys, if you have any questions, uh, I would still highly recommend people going to look for this. I will put links below for uh, all the gear I use for this, mainly for the camera and the, and the lens. I'll get a review of the lens later on down the line. Um, but I think it's an excellent camera, especially if you can find one used. Just make sure it's a USA model, so if you ever have to get it serviced, you can do that, because Nikon does not service uh, non-USA model stuff. Um, but if you're just looking to you know, be a hobbyist, do some, you know, you want to start some YouTube stuff, and you want to get a full-frame camera, and you can find one used, or even new, if you want to buy one new, they have bundles out there with the adapter and the, and the XQD card. I think it's an excellent option to choose especially if you don't want to spend a fortune on lenses, which I really love the Canon EOS R, but the lenses are so expensive uh, that I would kind of steer clear of that. Oh, one quick negative. It does not have a flip, uh, flip out screen. It only kind of rotates uh, up and down. It doesn't flip out. So if you're a vlogger and you want a screen that flips out to you, this is not going to be the camera for you because it does not do that. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them below and I will answer what I can. Sorry, this is a little bit uh, unorganized review. Again, I'm just a hobbyist. I don't do any type of pro grade work with this. It's just something that I wanted because we like traveling, taking photos, uh, and doing some video work. Um, so that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.